on his bank statements, he spent like a thousand dollars in one month on OnlyFans. So Sheikh Mamdouh will open an OnlyFans page. Sheikh Mamdouh opens OnlyFans. <laughs> Um, uh, watching pornography. It takes away the reward, mm -hmm. but it does not break the fast. Masturbation. Yeah. Uh, it will break the fasting. Like they like that kind of thing. You cannot do that. Sometimes actually a person might have a jinn, might have something. Yani sometimes I say a marriage can continue with two people disliking each other. Now people are saying no marriage without love. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Assalamu alaikum guys. Thank you for joining us for episode two of the Beyond Brothers podcast. Today we have a very, very dear guest to my heart. He's my mentor. He is a Ijazza holder of all 10 Qira'at, Sheikh, Dr. Sheikh. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, he's a graduate of Azhar University um, and so many more things that I could talk about for the next hour. But inshallah, Dr. Sheikh Mamdouh. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. How are you doing? Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inshallah, you're doing well. Alhamdulillah. Not, not a far drive. Also, uh, Sheikh is um, the resident scholar of our masjid, Masjid al Salam, here in Spring, Texas. So he brings a lot of his uh, expertise and his. Um, and his knowledge to us to help the community. Wallah alhamd. Um, doctor, we are going to jump right into it, inshallah. Okay. So, I know that you have a lot of experience with different communities in America. And also different communities on the other side of the world, in the East. I wanted to know, what is what do you see is the biggest difference in, um, in difficulties that the West sees versus the East? In my opinion, it's uh, culture. Mm -hmm. So if we talk about like a, a static, uh, disciplined culture, mm -hmm. in the West there is none. Okay. There is none. Uh, it used to be for the past century or so, mm -hmm. but uh, in the East still they're holding it. So if you go to the Middle East, there is a Middle Eastern culture. If you mm -hmm. go deeper, there's the Egyptian culture versus Syrian culture, Palestinian culture. Yes. If you go even deeper, there is the Upper Egypt culture, South Egypt. You go deeper, and yeah. you'll find like no, that, sure. subcultures and so on. Mm -hmm. But there is a kind of common denominator culture. So you go to Middle East, he said this is a Middle Eastern culture. They are mm -hmm. reserved, like, such and such and such. And you put that in a religious frame, mm -hmm. that gives you the picture of it. Like you can predict, you can see, you can notice how people normally behave. Yeah. But here in America, for example, let's focus in the United States. Yes. This is very hard to do that. For sure. You know, um, you add into the pot, mm -hmm. the gender issue, mm -hmm. then you have different cultures. You have the sexual orientation issue, there's mm -hmm. a different culture. You have a religious issue, there's different cultures. So you cannot, you do not know what it is. So, and that creates a problem on the re religious front. Mm -hmm. Because people will mix between culture and religion. We'll have that in the political front. We'll have that in the gender front. Okay. And all of that, you, you, you cannot hold it somewhere. You, you, you do not know how to. So would you say there's too much individualism here? Yes. That's what it That's is. That's exactly what would be guiding everything. General problems, specific problems, individual problem, family problem, mm -hmm. everything. You're going to find that. It is me, me, me. Yeah. It is, you know, I, me, and mine. For sure. Like in Urdu, they will say, Ya Sheikh, apni, apni dik. Means like me only. You know? It's about me only. So this is the, in every culture you'll find that. Right. But in every culture, it is more of a joke. Mm -hmm. But here in the United States, it is a serious deal. Yeah. So me is a serious deal. You don't For joke sure. about it. Yeah. But in any other culture where you talk about yourself only, it's a joke. It's like a joke. Yeah. 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 No, no, for sure. No, I see that 100%. And it's almost like, like we see in the corporate world too, um, you have to step on people to get to a higher degree in your job. You have to, uh, like even people who get like very business successful here, they've cheated, like 90% of them have cheated their way to it. Not saying that they didn't put the hard work in, but there are those, like they had to do some, you know, black market deals in order to get to where they are. 
So basically the step in humanity. Yeah. Because you know there are like three circles. One is the circle of humanity. Mm-hmm. And inside of it, if you want to imagine it, there is the cultural mm-hmm. uh, circle. Then inside of it is the religious mm-hmm. circle. Then you know you have the social circle. Mm-hmm. Then you know the personal circle. Yeah. So personal is me. But you, you cannot understand me without this social circle yeah. and that religious circle and that human circle. Mm-hmm. But when it is me and you ignore all of those, yes. so you're going to step on the religion, you're going to step on the culture, you're going to step on the social, you're going to step on even the humanity For sure. because you're not respecting anybody, it's all about you. Mm-hmm. So if you have, take that to corporate, as you mentioned, the person just want to be on the top, mm-hmm. regardless how they get in the top, how many you know, uh, casualties there, yes. they don't care. It's just me on the top. Mm-hmm. But they don't know or they don't realize that they can be one of the casualties. For sure. As well. They probably were a casualty before. Yeah, a casualty. And that's what they learned from to get and to ev- where And are. everybody looking at you, mm-hmm. trying to come and when I'm going to go step on that step. guy yep. and, and take his place as well. Yeah. So th- that's where religion comes and fixes mm-hmm. all of that. No, for sure, for sure. So um, to segue on that, so we said individualism is one of the biggest well, you see the crux of the issues that we see in the West is individualism. Now in the United States itself, you've been to different cities, different states in the United States. Do they all have, do you see the same issues happening in every state or some states focusing on different? Are other states developed Islamically better than? Because uh, just to bring up a, a um, an example, like we see European or UK Muslims I feel like they're way more developed than American Muslims. They have their infrastructures. They have their kind of like their own culture there. Uh, whereas in America, maybe we're not as developed or we don't have our stronghold here yet. Actually, it is relative. Okay. In my opinion, it depends how you look at it. Yes. If you look at it from Muslim perspective, let's yes. say, you know, religiously, they mm-hmm. are ahead of us, as you said. Yes. If you look at it from like, you know, time wise. Mm-hmm. There are older communities, for sure. So that maybe the what you're looking at mm-hmm. establish more mosques, yeah. there are more number of people, mm-hmm. and all of that. Um, if you look at the United States, the people are more outspoken, for sure. The people more involved. Yes. The people are. If you look at like what's happening in Gaza and Palestine, yeah. the West is the West. Yes. So you cannot say that there are stronger Muslim community over there, mm-hmm. generally speaking. Okay. So what are you doing toward the Muslims mm-hmm. in Burma, mm-hmm. Muslims in Gaza, Muslims in Kashmir? What are you doing toward that? Mm-hmm. Silent, crickets, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Or just demonstrations and so yes. on. So the Muslims are not powerful or they are not uh, impactful in the political arena. Okay. So it depends what you look at. Mm-hmm. Like they establish five times prayer. Mm-hmm. You can find some mosques here in Houston they're or in Texas. Sense. They do that mm-hmm. more than Europe. Some Europe more than so it depends how you look at it. So mm-hmm. it needs an accurate statistic, which is unfortunately not there yet. Okay. That's something that you go on the computer or you go on a website, and you can find the statistics, accurate statistics about Muslims, yeah. like about Catholics or Jews. You mm-hmm. can find you can accurate find that, statistics, yeah. but you cannot find that how many Muslim females versus males in mm-hmm. this age to that age. You know how many people attending Juma. I mean, there are some like that, ISPU here and PU mm-hmm. Center and all that. They make something close to that, but okay. not as accurate. So once you have that data, mm-hmm. then you would be able to say this they are ahead of us or not ahead of us or in this point or th- that point. Mm-hmm. But I see Islam in the West is going through the same challenges, have the same problems, have the same issues. Mm-hmm. It is the same. Okay. Okay. So uh, you were in Minnesota for a while. Right. And you were in Houston for also a very long while as well. Um, is there a difference between these two communities? Yes. Uh, again, mm-hmm. see, I, I started with culture for a reason. Yes. Uh, in, in Minnesota, there is a large Somali community. Okay. There is a list of Indo-Pak community. Mm-hmm. And the Arab community, maybe they are closer to each other. Also, the cold weather plays a big <laughs> role for people like always like indoors, yeah. you know, figuratively speaking. Sure. You know. So, but... It, it, the Muslim community in Minnesota was impactful in a way of presence. Okay. They are present. They are a big number. They mm-hmm. cannot be ignored. Okay. You know, doctors in the hospital have to learn Somali to speak to the really? people. Yes. Oh, wow. So in the streets, you find like hijabi sisters. You go mm-hmm. to 
uh, you know, um, you know those stores and all of that. You find the cashiers and everybody like Muslims, the beer, the hijab, and wow. all of that kind of thing. So that is that you can say Islam has a, a present. Yes, present. So that I, I just be careful when I say you know yes. like Islam is powerful. There, I'm not going to say that word. This is a big word, mm -hmm. but Islam is, has has presence. Now they start being politically involved with one congressman and another congresswoman, and mm -hmm. they're being involved. But Minnesota also. Because it's a Somali community, they are hungry for knowledge. Yes. So you will find that they are around their uh, shiuch. They mm -hmm. love Arabic language. Mm -hmm. They learn classical Arabic. So that's why you will find a revival in the sciences of Qiraat. And that's why I actually traveled there. Yeah. So from my sheikh there, and, and, and then, you know, you find that kind of um, uh, spirit mm -hmm. that there are people, you, you want to teach a metan, like, you know, a text, classical text, you'll find 100 people coming for wow. you. Wow. So that is not anywhere else in any state in the United States, except in Minnesota. Wow. And that's due also to the caliber of shiuch there. Uh -huh. So there is one or two shiuch there. They are the ones that people will come from all over the world, oh. literally. Yes. So that's why also that's another factor. Mm -hmm. But Minnesota was like a, like a, a big turning um, uh, thing for me. You know, right. It was a cornerstone in, in building like whoever I am. You know, like five years I stayed in Minnesota. It was the most enjoyable time. five years. But here in Texas and in Houston, uh, I know people will disagree with me on this, but it is more of a consumer kind of community. Really? It's That's more what I wanted to get into. Consumption. Okay. Service-based. Service-based community. Yes. So when I do something you, for you, you do something for me, and that's how right. we that's react. That's how it goes. No, not only that, but it is... How should I say? Like, I build a masjid, we build a masjid, so people can become happy, we can have more activities and all of that. But the, the vision of 20 years from now, mm -hmm. how many imams I'm producing, how many sisters I'm producing that they are mothers who are going to raise, it's not there okay. yet. So they don't have long-term, uh, like long-term sight? Is that what you're saying? No, they or, have a long-term vision uh -huh. on how the, the community uh, is going to look like. Presence. But how the community is going to function, okay. that is something that nobody's talking about. Mm. Like, you know, when I look at, at our masjid, like, yes. you know, 20 years from now, those kids who are reading Quran, yes. where are they going to be? What are they going to be doing? Mm -hmm. So 20 years from now, after they finish the Quran, what kind of subjects we need to teach them? Like, what a 20-year-old Muslim should know? Yes. Nobody talks about that. Mm -hmm. Like, what a, a newly married woman should know? What a pregnant woman should know. Like you want to level up the base knowledge of the whole, of the whole community. Right. So when people look at the United States, they say the Muslims at the United States, mm -hmm. college students. Mm -hmm. That is, that's how they drive. That's yes. that's where they're going. Mm -hmm. All college students, they kind of know this about Quran, this about this. I know it's kind of like dreamy. Yeah. But it can be done. No, for sure it can be. It it can be done. Like if you, if you say a law school student. You go to any law school in the United States, mm -hmm. that is yeah. the basic knowledge that they have. For sure. But Harvard would be different from Yale, and Yale different from University of Houston, right? No, for sure, yeah. So, based on the chances and all of that. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, there is a minimum base, mm -hmm. and there is the ceiling of expectation, and of there course. is the, the, floor of the, of the uh, floor of the minimum. Mm -hmm. So, I am minimum, I should know that, but there is a ceiling of expectation, you know, sky's the limit. Mm -hmm. So, not there yet. Yeah. So when you say the Dallas community is ahead yes. of Muslim of Houston community, and I say, you know, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, when I, most of the people say, it's Sheikh, when you go to on a Wednesday night, you yes. find the masjid full of people in Isha like Juma. Ah. Yes. So, wonderful. And then what? Like what comes after that? There's no plan. Yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So I know people will not like what I'm saying, but mm -hmm. I say, you know me, I say yes, it as I it is, you know. know. <laughs> okay, our masjid now is full. Yes. Number one, why is it full? You know why is it full? Because convenience. Mm -hmm. Like my house is close to the masjid. So I, I'd rather pray at the masjid. I'm bored. Yeah. I just go pray at the masjid. I'm not saying everybody does that. No, no, yeah. But what I'm, and I know I'm, I'm going to be controversial now, yes. but what I'm trying to say is like, make a survey. Ask people, mm -hmm. why are you in here? They said, oh, because the masjid is full. So the guy actually came because the masjid is full. full. Yeah. And type, the masjid is full now. So what do you do when you go home? For an empty masjid or a full masjid? Like a guy prayed Isha in an empty masjid and his brother prayed Isha in a full masjid. Mm -hmm. Oh, such and such sheikh was there and gave a khatira. Mm -hmm. 
Wonderful. Great. What did you benefit from it? Exactly. What's the benefit of exactly. having a full masjid versus an empty masjid? And that sheikh, mm-hmm. that sheikh, why is he giving a lecture in the full masjid versus the empty masjid? Why he does not give a weekly lecture in the empty masjid? To make it full. To make it full. Mm-hmm. Like, why are not doing that? That's a question, right? Yeah. Ty, when he prepared his lecture, mm-hmm. what was in your head? You have a full masjid now attending in front of you. Do you have a plan? I'm going to be giving this weekly lecture for a year to achieve one, two, three. If it's not achieved, may Allah reward you. Mm-hmm. You did good. But do you have that plan when you go? Or are you just the famous guy? Mm-hmm. Mm. So, and you go on and on like yes. that, you know, like, you, yeah. You, you know, in our mentorship class, for you, know, sure. you have no limits in this. No, no, of yeah, course. So. And no, that's what I like. It need, people need to understand what the reality of the situations work, are, right? Work your head. Like, yeah. Let your brain function. Yeah. Don't take things for granted. Mm-hmm. We, we have limitations, right? For we sure. have red lines. We have exactly. red lights. Exactly. There are things we cannot transgress in our religion. We love Allah. We have the aqidah. We have the prophet. Quran is like a fact. Mm-hmm. All of that. But let's think about our problems. Mm-hmm. Let us think about our daily life. Yeah. You know, uh, now I'm in my 50s, you're in your 30s. And then, you know, 20 years from now, uh, if I'm still alive, I'm in my 70s and my children will be... What am I planning for them? What like, is it going to be there for them? Yeah. yeah. So what, what is going to be there? Mm-hmm. Like I'm attending a lecture. We, Me and you now are doing this podcast. Yes. So 20 years from now, you're going to have a child who's like 18, 19 year old. Inshallah. Is he going to be sitting in this seat? In this capacity or that capacity? We could, you see yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know, what, what is the plan? Mm-hmm. We always have a plan, by the way. For sure. He's going to be in that college. Mm-hmm. He's driving a better exactly. car than mine. But nobody said that he's going to be praying tahajjud. If I don't pray tahajjud, my son is going to be praying tahajjud. Yeah. Or my daughter is going to do what I did not do. Yes. Or my son is going to make hifz of Quran. What I did. Nobody talks about that. And that's what I was talking about with Musa uh, last week on the podcast. It was that we have... Um, one of the other mashaykh that I listened to, he says that when people are... When, th- when the child's in the womb, they know exactly what preschool they're going to what their education is going to be, what medical school they want to go to, what cars, like you said, what cars they want them to and drive. And a college fund. And college fund. They're, it's all fully Before funded. Before they're born. Before they're born. College fund. Yes. And the grandfather will say to his children, here is a, before they get married, yes. here is a college fund for your, your children, children. you're going to get after you get married, if you get married. So they have, <laughs> they have such a deep foresight yeah. for secular activity. Not only secular. Here is, here is the word. Mm-hmm. Materialism. Materials. Okay. So you have a materialistic things figured out. Mm-hmm. The clothes, yes. how I'm going to look like, mm-hmm. what kind of watch, what kind of car, what kind of college, material life. Mm-hmm. So add the individualism yes. to materialism, you have the worst thing ever. Subhanallah. You have the worst thing ever in the history of humanity. Mm-hmm. When somebody is selfish and he has the means, mm-hmm. the material means, Subhanallah. that is very bad. That's why Islam came. Mm-hmm. To fix the two. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu. Not ya ayyuhal mu'min. Not all you who believe one guy. No, all you who believe community. Mm-hmm. So fixing the individual problem. Mm-hmm. You are not an individual anymore. You are a community. You are a jama'ah. Mm-hmm. You are all equal. No benefit of... Uh, no, favor, no uh, There is no degree for a white over black or black over this. Nothing except with taqwa that Allah only knows. Yes. So me and you cannot even figure the taqwa so we can prefer each other. And Islam fixes the material covetousness. Mm-hmm. Said, so They prefer others over themselves. Mm-hmm. So take the individualism and the love of the material. Mm-hmm. And you are now a community member. You prefer the jama'ah over yourselves. Mm-hmm. And whatever in your hand, you like it to be in the hand of others as yes. well. So Islam is the solution for that. For sure. That's what every Muslim... So that Muslims become the worst... If they have that disease. Yes. Because you have the cure of the disease, but you're not using you're it. You're pushing it away. The others have the disease because they don't they have, have the, the antidote. Mm-hmm. You have the antidote and you are not <laughs> using it. <laughs> Subhanallah. Yeah. Subhanallah. No, no, that is perfect. Another perfect segue to, we're speaking generally, right? Individualism, materialism. These are generally what issues come from. I believe Imam Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah, he says that two things cause the heart to be corrupt. Ghafla and Hawa. And I think that's kind of what we're going with right now. Um, but I want to bring it in a little bit deeper, right? We talked about generally. We went a little bit more specific. I want to talk about more specific. Okay. In the family, in the family unit, you see, I remember you were giving a khutbah one time. 
and you were saying that there doesn't pass three days without you getting a phone call of hearing somebody want to get a divorce or getting divorced or just got a divorce. No, hardly a day, not three days. Subhanallah. The three so, days was last year. <laughs> Subhanallah. Really? So uh, I want to know, famili- like not just between husband and wife, but the family unit with the children. What do you see the biggest issues are in our community and in the and generally speaking? Okay, bring the same two issues, mm-hmm. the materialism and individualism, mm-hmm. and put them in any family. You don't have a family unit. Add to it, mm-hmm. add to it, the lack of communication. Okay. Communication, right? Mm-hmm. So add to that. Now the social media, the virtual world, people are sitting in the room, but they're not sitting in the room. Each one has their own life, mm-hmm. which comes from individualism. For sure. So I'm thinking about myself. If I'm thinking about you, I'm going to give you attention when you're yes. sitting. You are talk- we're talking because you make the podcast, you make this here. I cannot just get my phone and start seeing the message because we are doing something. Mm-hmm. This is called communication. We yeah. are doing an activity together. Yes. If a person comes there in, into this activity, we're going to engage them. Mm-hmm. But if that person is not interested in our activity, what are the chances of him jumping in? Low. No chance, right? Mm-hmm. So family comes in there with that mentality. I'm not interested to join this. Mm. So the school system, the work system, it's individualistic, materialistic. You come home, you're supposed to find the cure for that. Mm-hmm. How you cure? You start communicating. But you bringing the distractions of the world into the family. So lack of communication. Mm-hmm. That's number one. Now, lack of religious education. Okay. I'm talking about general, mm-hmm. not Muslims only. Yes. I visited religious faith-based communities, and mm-hmm. they have the same exact issue. The lack of religious identity. Mm-hmm. You know, there is about 30% or so, 20 to 30%, if I'm correct, but not less than 20, not more than 30. I, I know that. 20, those Muslim community mm-hmm. children who identify as Muslims by name only. Wow. Like when you say, how you identify, oh, I'm a Muslim. But do you pray? No. no. Do you pray Jum'ah? No. Do you fast Ramadan? No. You know, it's things probably, like that. Yeah. So by name only. That yeah. means it's actually not yeah. Muslim, yeah. but well, let's not jump to that. Yes. But let's yeah. say that they're Muslims. Mm-hmm. So whenever you have a statistics... And saying the Muslim number is such and such, I want you to know that there is about 30% there who are not actually there. Mm -hmm. Okay? For sure. So now take that and look at your community, the one who's praying there. Mm -hmm. It is either the father or the brother or the son or the sister or the daughter or someone like that. Mm -hmm. 30% is not a small number, you know? It affects every family. It affects every family, you know? Mm -hmm. Like that. So... The problem with this family structure, that the structure of the family is not there anymore. Mm-hmm. Why? Because the family in the culture of the past century, this century, 20th century, 21st century, was dissolving. Okay. You have the community mm-hmm. dissolved. Yes. Now you are just a citizen. Mm-hmm. You are not a community. Mm-mm. You cannot say the community of Houston or the community of Texas, they, before they had that identity. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so for sure. you said, oh, I'm a Texan. What is that now? It entails a couple but of But a years ago, the, hundred years ago, there was an identity yeah. for a Texan person. Oh, Mississippi, there is an identity. Houstonian, there is an identity there. But that identity dissolved. Then comes the family. Mm-hmm. Dissolved. Because the father is not the head of the household anymore. Mm-hmm. Breadwinner versus not breadwinner. Mm-hmm. Uh, money, money becomes the reason who has more power in the family. Mm-hmm. It is not because of the gender issue, and you're gonna get to that mix, yes. you know. <laughs> so then, the only thing left is the individual, mm-hmm. and now the individual doesn't have identity either. So you're talking to me about family, mm-hmm. while actually the individual does not know what kind of individual. Subhanallah. Yeah, they don't know. Am, yeah. I, am I a male or a female or what? So that's taken away from you too. Mm-hmm. So you just become like a machine now. Mm-hmm. And at least the animal, you say, oh, that's a lion. This yes. is a cat. This yeah. is a dog. You know, the, the, the cat is not going to say, it's, instead it's of meow, they're going to say rough, rough. Yeah, you know. know, because I like to be a dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's not that, but humans do that. Mm-hmm. So uh, to your question, the biggest thing about the family is lack of communication mm-hmm. and lack of religious belonging. Because religion is the one thing that the belief system of which should not be changing. Yes. 
and it has a divine source. And the divine source should be non-negotiable. Mm-hmm. Yani, how can me as a non-divine define what is divine? You can't. I can interpret what is divine, yes. but I cannot define what is divine. Mm-hmm. Quran is divine. Mm-hmm. That's it. So it's either you believe in it as divine or you don't you believe in it. Yep. If you say it's not divine, you don't believe in it. So basically that is the issue. Mm-hmm. A family does not have a moral religious compass. Okay. That all family members abide by mm-hmm. when they dispute. They don't have a foundation to go back to. A furqan between them. In communication mm-hmm. and in belief system. Okay. Because you asked about the problem yes. with the family. Mm-hmm. Why? Because we family. I am different from my dad. Yes. And my dad is different from my mom. Mm-hmm. And I am different from my siblings. Mm-hmm. There is differences. But those differences are accepted. Once we dispute, we say, what does our religion say? Exactly. Then we all come down to it because we believe in the same thing. Yes. Then, no, you know what? It is not the, our tradition is to shout when we are communicating. Mm-hmm. That is communication mm-hmm. etiquette, right? Yes. Our family, do, we do not solve problems mm-hmm. like that. See, there is a culture of the family mm-hmm. based on which we communicate. And there is a religion, religious system based on which we stand on the same ground. We can differ. For we sure. can dispute. We can disagree. Mm-hmm. But there is a, a ground which is called the faith. And there is a system called communication. Yes. Take those two away. Family is corrupted. Anything happens. Yes, sir. Anything goes. So now, as a family, that, that's what we see. Now, between husband and wife, your PhD was about divorce. Yes, sir. So, I know people, <laughs> when I tell them I have a PhD, they say, oh, it's a divorce. Sheikh, don't talk to us. Subhanallah. <laughs> but uh, it's not a bad thing. But yeah, you need to know the enemy so you understand how it works. Right. Yes. Exactly. So, uh, speaking of divorce, what do you see... If you could give me theoretically like a uh, a general idea what the issue is like individual individualism lack of communication and then if you could give me like a specific example of you seeing that like between husband and wife and why that causes the rift between them you are you are you are seeing what is the main thing that causes rift yes in general and then in specific, specific. and then then an example yes okay you will be surprised I spent four or five years almost, mm-hmm. in my research, PhD. Mm-hmm. And I found a list of stuff. But when I talked to my mom, <laughs> she gave me two reasons that summarized everything. SubhanAllah. You know, she said, you know, because I, I, I talked to her. You know, when I was doing the research, I talked to everybody. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, SubhanAllah, she's amazing. And like, you know, almost, um, almost 60 years of marriage. Mm. Yeah. So she says, the reason that marriage is like, like that is two reasons. Mm-hmm. No patience, mm-hmm. right? No, no patience, and stubbornness mixed with arrogance. Subhanallah. And everything I listed comes under one of the two. Subhanallah. Wow. Yes. So if you say that the husband feels that he's superior, mm-hmm. or the wife feels that she's inferior, mm-hmm. right? What is that? Comes down to arrogance, yes. yep. mixed with selfishness or whatever. Mm-hmm. Now. If you talk about, like, I cannot do this anymore, mm-hmm. that's impatience. Impatience, yep. You're not going to give it a try and all that. Mm-hmm. You come and talk about financial issues that causes the divorce. So, yeah. P- patience. Mm-hmm. You come about, like, you know, they working t- together, superiority, inferiority complex. Mm-hmm. See, always, you go around it, you will find that there is no patience mm-hmm. and there is ar- arrogance and stubbornness. Subhanallah. Like the, the guy, the, the husband, Say something, mm-hmm. she proves him wrong, and he is stubborn because he cannot come down. Subhanallah. He doesn't want to come down. She was proven wrong, and she has to prove that she's equal and she's da da da, and all of that kind of thing that comes in. So basically, my mom, who's not the educated person, yani, mm-hmm. the academia and all that, mm-hmm. yet she diagnosed it perfectly Perfect. right. So those are the two things. Mm-hmm. In, uh, of course, as I said in the beginning, the cultural issue, yes. the, the materialism, the individualism. Mm-hmm. They go everywhere. They go to the child. When they're young, they don't want to share with the other one. It corrupts everything. It corrupts everything. You give a child a snack, and he does not want to give anybody else his mind. Let him go get his. Mm -hmm. See, it is in the air. They smell it. They see it in the cartoon and everything. Mm -hmm. So that is what you are up against. Mm -hmm. It goes everywhere, Mm age-wise, financial-wise, gender-wise. Those two things, right? Now, husband and wife, if they do not have, and I'm sorry to say that, forget about this love talk. Yeah. Doesn't help. 
I saw people who love each other, but they are not married. Mm -hmm. When they're married, they get divorced. SubhanAllah. Loving each other, by the way. Mm -hmm. You know, I swear, a specific example, two people sitting in front of me, mm -hmm. said, you know, I love her so much. Oh yeah, I love him so much. What are you doing here again? We're getting divorced. What? <laughs> like, you know, okay, you love each other. So why? Oh, because, you know, we disagree on everything. I said, if you actually love each other, you wouldn't disagree on everything. Exactly. Because, because what is the difference between faith and love? Faith? Faith. Mm -hmm. Belief. Yes. I, I believe. I'm a Muslim. I believe. What is the difference between that mm -hmm. commitment and the commitment to a person that you love? Would it be the, the commitment to faith is you don't really expect anything back and then for love you expect a reciprocal no actually love is supposed to be not expecting everything back mm -hmm. you know the main that is the main the main issue mm -hmm. is that they are opposite to each other in one thing compromising uh, in faith stubbornness no no, no. in faith mm -hmm. you have to be stubborn yes for you sure. cannot compromise your faith for any reason including yeah. love yes i love allah mm -hmm. and no love can come there Mm -hmm. That's why mm -hmm. Nothing else So Allah put love with faith mm -hmm. Because that's a special type of love Yes. Now you separate them Because I don't worship the one I love Of course. I love my wife, she loves me But we don't worship each other mm -hmm. So love is going to be love only here mm -hmm. But love is going to clash with everything else And you should compromise Because love, you kind of compromise For the one that you love yes. So that's why I say Forget about love. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about how we handle yeah. two people mm -hmm. establishing a family mm -hmm. for the sake of Allah mm -hmm. want to have children and keep that institution. SubhanAllah. Whether there is love or not. Said Umar ibn Khattab, a person come and said, I want to divorce my wife. He said, why? He said, because I don't love her. I said, why, Haq? Who to you? Do you think all these houses are based on love? That kind of romantic mm -hmm. love. Yeah. So when I say don't talk to me about love, it doesn't mean I, be, I don't believe in love. I, I do. Mm -hmm. I do. But it it's is not, not the end all it all. is not the ground. Yes. It is an ingredient. Yes. Lots of people have heart problems, they don't eat salt. Yes. <laughs> you do not eat sugar if you are diabetes. Mm -hmm. And love is sugar, right? Yes. So sometimes it's not good for you. Exactly. What what um people will hate me for that, but <laughs> sometimes I say don't talk about love. You know, mm -hmm. talk about communication. Yeah. That's why there are many people. They don't have feelings towards each other, but a very successful pair. For sure. Very successful couple, actually. Mm -hmm. That's why Allah Azza said in the Quran, you'll be surprised with this. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Sometimes I said a marriage can continue with two people disliking each other. Now people are saying no marriage without love. Yeah. No, I'm saying actually there should be marriage with disliking mm -hmm. each other, but not disliking to the hatred level. Yani that abuse and all that, that's no, not no, good. That's no, not no, no. I, we're going to transgress the person. No, mm -hmm. there is no attraction. Yeah. There is no chemistry, mm -hmm. but life is going. Yeah. Right? Some people are like that. I feel like a lot of older couples, they turn to that, right? right. They're, they're not in love, like how a young couple would be in love, but they just... They, they're so comfortable with the person or they're so used to the person that this is this is, this is my successful marriage. Right. And marriage, the main issue with marriage, before we get to the next segment, but the, the, the main issue with marriage nowadays mm -hmm. is that people enter it as a business deal <laughs> or as a fulfillment of a need. Then I ask them, okay, business deal is no problem, by the yeah, way. That's what I was but, but how are you, how, how are you going to make that business profitable? Mm -hmm. There is no, 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 no plan for that. How you are going to make it stronger? No plan for that. Mm -hmm. What are the fruits of that business? No plan for that. So you take it as a business, but you don't run it as a business. Oh, there you, you go. You see? Yes. So you consider it as a business deal. That's fine. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Yeah. It's an agreement between two people. For sure. But what are the mutual benefit? What are the duties? And Did you read about the duties and rights of husband and wife? Nope. What are you going to do when you have children? No plan. Business should be business. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you run it, you plan it, your strategy, you're growing, you scale up, all yes. of the kind of thing. But they don't apply. It's like running a masjid like a business, but they don't run it like a business. Yes. So you never ran it as an Islamic institution, mm -hmm. plus you never ran it as a business. business. Yeah. So you just like... You're teetering the line. Right. Both sides. Now, the other issue that they enter marriage 
to try. And that is a new problem I'm seeing now. Really? People in marriage to try. And I am, I'm not seeing this as an excuse. I'm giving, not giving benefit of doubt, so don't misunderstand me yes. and the people. But I'm saying there is a reason for it. Mm-hmm. The new generation coming. You're born and raised here. Yes. So those who are in their 30s and 40s now, they're actually born and raised in the United States. Yes. And that culture have like the out of food lock kind of relationship is like commonplace Easy. now. Easy, no problem. Boyfriend, girlfriend is actually something become necessary for people. For sure. Now we don't have that option. No. So my only option to be with a girl or a girl to be with a boy is to get married. Mm-hmm. Right? And then they get married and they find out that they are not a match. Yeah. It was so just, they're actually people enter marriage with that niya. Like, I'm just going to fulfill the desire and khawas. Not that. It might work, it might not work, and it's like, let's try. Mm-hmm. Now I'm seeing three months, six months, nine months, and they want to get divorced. It's not about money and stuff. No. It's, it's about like, yeah, well, it didn't work. What? It's kind of like that. Now, what is the reason for this? We go back to the family. Mm-hmm. There is no family structure. We go back to the community. Mm-hmm. Community is not functioning as a community. Mm-hmm. Because it shouldn't be a problem. America itself, they had courting. Yes, they had they families knowing each other. For sure. They had arranged marriages yes. in a good sense. Not arranged marriage means forced, forced marriage. marriage. No, no difference. No. Arranged marriage means I have a daughter, you have a son. Let them meet together. Do you like her? Do you like him? Let's get married, guys. Yes. That's, that's the arranged marriage. Uh, you're not forcing them. You're just introducing them to each other. They used to have that. In here, yeah, in this country, sure. everywhere. But now this is not the case and Muslims are suffering from it. Mm-hmm. So now how many problems? We say three problems. Mm-hmm. One, people entering marriage as like a business deal or whatever. And if they don't have their expectation met, they're out. Mm-hmm. Number two, they are trying mm-hmm. because they don't have another option like others. Yes. You know, so they're trying. So they enter with that. That might work right more. So they are not sincerely committed. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that third one now that you know that people are not you know don't have a family structure and education and all no back no backing to what they're coming in and that's what i see all the time Mm -hmm. that's what i see all the time now a specific example to that uh, i would say that um, two young people get married Mm -hmm. and families have expectations kids have certain expectations they did not see it said you know, I think I need a divorce. Two weeks. Two weeks? Two weeks into marriage. So they basically went on a honeymoon. Uh, Sheikh, and they're looking at each other. They don't want to tell me. They're looking at each other. What's going on? Oh, you tell him. No, no, you tell him. Is it, are we playing or something here? You guys are just married for two weeks. Do you, you have a chance to even know each other? Did you know? Did you speak to them before they got married? Yes. So you knew? Yeah, I knew. And all of that. But the problem is people rush marriage. And rush divorce. Mm. Before they rush marriage and no haste for divorce. Yes. And you should slow marriage and slow divorce. <laughs> you know, you have to take your time mm-hmm. and that will affect you. But that's a specific example of all what I just told you. Mm. The families don't have a family structure. Mm-hmm. The two did not talk to each other before marriage much. Mm-hmm. I talked to them and they were like kind of Okay, let's get married because our parents want us to get married. And then they have certain expectations. Neither of them had like boyfriend, girlfriend before. I'm not justifying that, but they don't. Mm -hmm. So you put all that mix and two people find themselves in front of each other and there is no chemistry. Mm -hmm. So basically they don't want that. They wanted wanted it to be fireworks from the beginning. And they didn't see that expectation. So they had something in their head. We tell them, okay, just give it a year. They said, wow, Sheikh, you want me to sit there for a year? Wow. (laughs) So that's one example. Another example, people who are married for 30 years. Uh And money is the issue. When you say money is the... So when you say money is the issue, right? Because I don't... I honestly, I don't understand that point of view whatsoever because with me and my wife, right? If we have a money issue, it's, I mean, it's never an issue. If we have like a financial burden on us, we just talk through it and it's... You see just what you said? You just do what? Talk through it. What does that mean? Communication. What does that mean? That means we are, we're on the same. Thank you. We're on the same. So money will never be an issue. Okay. But if you don't have that established... Mm-hmm. 
You don't have that kind of... I'm, I'm not talking about, again about romantic love. Yeah. That can be there, cannot be there. But there are two people who are mature enough mm-hmm. that they have a relationship. They're going to have a children. Mm-hmm. They kind of understand that track. Yes. So money is not going to break that important institution that we have. Mm-hmm. So let's communicate. Let's go through it, even if they're hungry, even if they're homeless, yes. they're still going to be together. For sure. So all those things are ingredients of the dish, mm-hmm. but they are not the dish. Okay. You get the point? Yes. When I say money is the problem, because it is the main ingredient. I get it. I get it now. now you get That's it? what they built the marriage upon, was money. Not you only c- that, before even a marriage is built, ya Habibi, <laughs> before even the marriage is built, mm-hmm. that is the only expectation. I want to set up my daughter with a rich guy. Yes. Money is an issue. Yes. A rich guy wants a rich woman. That mm-hmm. money is the issue. Mm-hmm. Non-rich guy wants a rich woman. Yes. That money is the issue. He marries uh, somebody in the College of Medicine. Mm-hmm. Why? Because once she graduates, I don't have to work. Yes. So money is the issue. He is very rich and he's working in oil and gas or a mm-hmm. doctor or a surgeon or everything like that. Mm-hmm. Then money is the issue. So everybody is securing. It's mm-hmm. like you invest in 401k? Yeah. No, I'm going to have a husband or a wife like that. Yeah. <laughs> they are my ATM machine. That's my investment. Uh, and that's why when people actually writing a marriage contract... They, okay, I know I did not raise my daughter just the proper way. She's not going to be a good wife mm-hmm. unless, you know, inshallah, miracle happens. Yes. I'm just saying, some people like that. Mm-hmm. So let her get married. But let's write a big number on that guy if he divorces her. Mm-hmm. So or he cannot divorce her because he's going to lose half of his wealth. Mm-hmm. So I do not prepare my daughter to be a good wife. And ch- chain the guy there. So now that's when I say money is the issue. I'm not saying only this fights. I'm yeah. saying it is the aqidah. That they built it up. From the, the beginning, beginning. Raising a child Even like raising that. raising a child. Wow. You know? So, individualism, mm-hmm. materialism. See, it keeps coming in our mm-hmm. session. You know, yeah. like, we'll keep going like that. Mm-hmm. It seeps in everything in your life. So, so that's why I tell people, okay. The type of people who come to, my, to me for, for divorce. Mm-hmm. They, it's not the people who have a million and more. One million and more, mm-hmm. they go straight to the court. They don't even talk. They don't talk to me about sharia. Right? Mm-hmm. Because now money is the issue. Mm-hmm. People who come to me, that's number one. Mm-hmm. It's either they are religious, mm-hmm. whether rich or poor, or they are poor. Mm-hmm. They are poor because if they go to the court, it's going to cost them. Yeah. Lawyer is going to take $5,000, $5,000. We don't have $5,000. Mm-hmm. So let's go to the sheikh and finish the deal peacefully, mm-hmm. amicably. Sheikh, what are the rights? What are the duties? Let's sign a paper. You know, go to the court, file. They even don't hire a lawyer. Boom, done. That's one type. Mm-hmm. I'm not accusing everybody is like that. Yeah. Or they are religious, meaning they are actually fearing Allah Azza wa Jal. Mm-hmm. Whether they have hundred million or whether they have ten ten dollars. Mm-hmm. They want to come and say, Sheikh, give us the Sharia things. We want an agreement. We're going to mediate it. Then we'll accept it. We'll go to the court and we'll get the paperwork done. Because going to the court to get paperwork is not an issue. Mm -hmm. The issue is when you have a Sharia that have an alternative and you prefer the other alternative alternative over it, that actually can lead to kufr. Yes. I wanted to ask you the ruling on if if a woman forces the husband to go give me half of your money. No, that's haram. That is, that's ghasp. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, this is kind of stealing uh, under um, what they call it, like robbery, armed robbery, mm-hmm. kind of. Wow. Like by the force of the law, mm-hmm. I'm going to put you in jail, I'm going to do that. If you, no, you have to give me half half of your wealth. Now, if the husband willingly give it, nobody can say anything. Sure. Sharia was, nobody can say anything. Sure. Legal was, he's free. Mm-hmm. But when you go against his will mm-hmm. to take money that you did not do anything in it, that's, that's not right. Mm-hmm. And then you are ignoring the Sharia that can lead to abandoning Islam. And if somebody drinks mm-hmm. wine, but he knows that it's a disobedience of Allah, that's one ruling. Mm-hmm. But if somebody drinks wine and said there is nothing in Quran saying haram, I don't believe in anything like that, that's a kafir. Yes. So you have to understand that, you know... You're teetering that <laughs> yeah. between belief and disbelief. And that's why I'm saying, like, if, yeah. if, 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 if a wife takes her husband to the court mm-hmm. and say he commit adultery because he had a second wife, and I know this is a controversial thing, yeah. and it's not I'm promoting or not promoting here. I'm just talking about a specific example yes. so a woman takes her husband and many do that husband goes secretly marry another woman regardless yani, whatever happened she finds out she sues him what is the main thing adultery mm-hmm. 
Did he commit adultery? No. Okay. So when she says adultery, she's lying. Okay. Now one or two things. Mm -hmm. It's either you are actually accusing him of adultery, so it means he's not married but he's committing adultery. Mm -hmm. Now you have to bring four witnesses. Otherwise, you are kazif. Mm -hmm. Means you're going to be lashed eighty times, mm -hmm. and your testimony will not be accepted ever. And you are fasiq. Mm -hmm. Fasiq means a rebellious person against Allah. Yes. That's your ruling in Quran. It's not mamduhi. It's the Quran. Or you are saying. That marriage, I call it adultery. Oh, هذا كفر بالله. Okay. If you see a صحيح marriage, yes. I'm not talking about emotion. Yes. I'm not talking political. Yes. I'm not talking social. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking legal. <laughs> I'm not talking any of that. Mm -hmm. So please do not judge me on this. Yes. I'm saying you are seeing two people who say we did nikah. Mm -hmm. There's witnesses, there's wadi, Mahar, everything. Everything. Yes. Now, why he did it, or he, forget matter. about that. But now, that one. It is a sahih nikah. Yes. Why do you call it adultery? Emotionally. Exactly. But mm -hmm. that can make you a kafir. Oof. And if you insist on that in, in there, there's a bigger problem. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not accusing specific people to become kafir. For sure. Because they're jahil. Yes. Yeah, yes. They do it out of ignorance. They mm -hmm. do it out of emotion. They do it for whatever. But our job is to tell them. This is a vahir. The sister, yeah, I know. You know, hell has no fury compared to an, a sister who is like mad. Yani, right? <laughs> so what I'm, what I'm saying is like, uh, that's one thing. But stopping at the rights of Allah is another. For sure. That's why I'm saying that the, the, the ground affairs that we stand on at all times, even against ourselves, even if we are dying, even if we are hurt, mm -hmm. if we are grieving, if we are, is the religious, unshakable, yes. unwavering ground. Yes. You come back to it and say, سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا غُفْرَانَكَ رَبَّنَا وَأَلَيْكَ الْمَصِيرِ Your husband transgressed you, your wife transgressed you, there was abuse, there was this, there was that. Let's take our right by the law, by the Islam, by everything, but I will never compromise my deen because of my anger. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to hurt someone or take more than I deserve or sh see them suffering mm -hmm. or I'll make sure that they are, you know, um, uh, hurting. Mm -hmm. All of this haram stuff. For sure. And that's what happened when it comes to divorce, unfortunately. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Quran when you want to divorce? You still, like, remember the... Wala tansa wal fadla baynakum. Yes. No. I wish I said Islam solves everything. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, you are angry and everything. don't even expose. Yes. Yani the, the man, they come to him from the Salaf, yani, mm -hmm. and he has problem. He's divorcing his wife. Why are you divorcing her? He said, I cannot reveal my wife's secrets. I know she's wrong, but I'm not going to tell you what she was wrong. And I, I'll divorce her. Mm -hmm. Then he divorced her. He said, okay, now you divorced her. She's not your wife. Talk, tell us. He said, I cannot back back a stranger woman. Subhanallah. The this difference. Is, this is... And there are women who exist now. Wallahi, Sheikh is like Malaika. Mm -hmm. The man divorces her. He transgresses her and everything. And I saw that with my eyes. And it's not one or two. There are many of them. Mm -hmm. I respect them. I make dua for them. She said, you know what? He's still the father of my children. I'm not going to hurt him. I'm not going to give him a bad reputation. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, may Allah forgive him for whatever. Allah is going to give me my haqq yawm al qiyamah. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to make the image of the father of my children bad in front of his children. There are women like that. MashaAllah. Right? And there are men who so, are very transgressors, mm -hmm. abusers. You know, they, so I'm talking from an objective sides. perspective yes, no, sure. because I'm seeing it. 30 yeah. years I'm seeing these things. Mm -hmm. So I'm not biased. But what we see around is people, when they go to the court, they forget it. Yes. They forget the deen. Materialism, individualism. Individualism, exactly. stubbornness, impatience, mm -hmm. love of revenge, you can name it. There is no deen that holds all of that down. Except for Islam. Mm. Uh, so speaking of, we, you, you kind of alluded to adultery. What is, how is infidelity in pornography in the Muslim community affecting marriage? Do you see it? Because well, let me give you something... Uh, so I, I watch this guy on YouTube. His name is, uh, he does financial auditing, right? So you'll come, a uh, husband and wife, they'll come and they'll show him all their paperwork and how we can budget for a better future. So one of the, one of the, the guys there, uh, on his bank statements, he spent like $1,000 in one month on OnlyFans. <laughs> I came to know OnlyFans like two months ago. Alhamdulillah. I did not know what is that. So and I, I, I was always thinking, I was always thinking, mm -hmm. and just, you know, I'm, maybe you consider me naive in this one, but you know, I know pornography there, sure. people talk to me about it, they mm -hmm. counsel and all that, but 
this only fan concept. I was thinking that somebody makes their own show mm -hmm. and people come and pay for it, like in a good way. Yeah. <laughs> like only fans, fans. Yes. Like only I, fans. I have fans. Yes. So Sheikh Mamdouh will open an only fan page. Like I was doing what I was thinking. Like <laughs> this is Sheikh only fan is like, That's the title. Sheikh Mamdouh opens only fan page. <laughs> that's that's going to be like, no, 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 Sheikh. So, don't, don't even say that again. It's, it's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, so people are trying, by the way, for only fans, people are trying to change it because it's not only meant for pornography, right? When the creator created it, he made it like a free platform so anyone could do anything. See, see I was right then. Yes. And people could pay the person who has the right. channel to get access to exclusive content. That is the idea of TikTok. But, but <laughs> we live in the world, Sheikh, where there is explicitness in every single thing that you could ever think of. Right. right? So they turned it, and that's why it's called that. So he spent like $1,000 on OnlyFans. That is a big problem in the Muslim community. So in the, I wanted to know how it is, there and, is. and yeah. how it, it affects. Does it go to infidelity? Or I'll, does I'll it... tell you, like every 10 cases... Mm -hmm. I have about two of them because of infidelity. So we're talking about 20%. It's infidelity. Infidelity. means the husband or the wife. Mm -hmm. And by the way, this is not one or the other. You'll be surprised. Really? Yes. Wow. Right. Last year alone, there was about six, maybe six cases I handled. Exactly three of them were women cheating and three of them men cheating. Subhanallah. And they get caught. And then they admit. It's not like... That those are not the cases that there is denying mm -hmm. because denying you cannot prove anything. Mm -hmm. You know, she says, he says, um, and he denies, even there are proofs. I don't count those, mm -hmm. I'm counting those who came clean. Yeah, I mean, like, yes, like you know, she got caught, he has the videos, he had the wow. things. But this guy from high school, from Wara, you know, they talk to him, give her some time, and things happen. But if they're not necessarily, they had a complete sexual intercourse, okay. like you know. Infidelity also, like, they talk beyond, yes. like, what as two stranger people talk. Mm -hmm. They felt very comfortable with each other. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it reaches to that, sometimes it doesn't. Okay. Okay. But there are some divorces that happen because of that. Wow. And some, they continued, but it's not working. Mm -hmm. They're going rough because it's in the back it's of the, the head. It's in the back of the head. How right. did they... She cannot forgive him, he cannot forgive her. As, as they're there because of the children, but it's not working. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. So infidelity is there. And that's one of the worst um, reasons that will shake up a marriage. For sure, for sure. It, would you say it's it's a huge issue in the Muslim community, or no. is it just infidelity? Is, no, it's present, but I would not say m money is a is a major issue sure. in the Muslim community. Okay. Like like American yeah, 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 culture, sure. yeah. but infidelity is not a big issue in the Muslim community. They are still holding the fort. Alhamdulillah. Like you know, marriages in Islam is a big no no to yeah, to sure. cheat. Yeah. It's not like it's not something easy. No, it's not easy to, mm -hmm. to happen. Even if the person have access, he still is afraid of uh, afraid of Allah, of course, and sure. afraid of the stigma, yeah. reputation, how the people look at. Mm -hmm. like, it's tough. It's tough. For so sure. most likely, people change communities and yeah, travel and all of that. Yeah. yeah, no, I've seen that. How about uh, pornography? Do you ever get couples coming in where the wife complains yes. about the husband, or the husband right. complains about the no wife? husband complaining about the wife? I haven't seen one. Really? <laughs> no. Okay. I haven't, I haven't seen one. I seen one that his wife goes to clubs. Wow. I've seen that. Wow. And then when I dig deeper, mm -hmm. he's the one who introduced her to the club before he repents. <laughs> <laughs> so, so before marriage, they used to go to club together. Mm -hmm. After marriage, they will go to club together. Mm -hmm. Then suddenly Allah guided him, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. So he come to the masjid and everything, but his wife still goes to club so without him. And wow. there are men involved and everything, yeah. but she's not doing anything yeah, like yeah, for big, sure. but... It's still it's still there. Yeah. So, but husband complaining from his wife from exposed to pornography? No. Mm -hmm. Wife? Yeah, there are many. Really? There are many. Yeah. Whether it is light stuff, mm -hmm. soft stuff, like they say, soft stuff, soft. or hard stuff. Mm -hmm. um, hard stuff means they pay, they pay or they go to meet someone, mm -hmm. do whatever, uh, or just watch on the computer. Mm -hmm. But watching in the computer is not only about married couple. It's kids as young as 14 and 15 years old. Sheikh. Like, even younger than that. Sheikh, 14, 15, that's like wishful thinking now. Yeah. Honestly, nine years old, 10 years old, eight years old, you're exposed to this stuff. No, I, actually, I was surprised. Like my six year old, one, one time, both of them they were telling me, Do you know, Baba, that anything you want, you just put a dot com after it? Yeah. I was like, kind of like, 
like my jaw dropped. Like anything comes in your head, put dot com after it and you'll find it. Yeah. See how dangerous that is. Mm-hmm. That means you're not searching. No. You're finding. Mm-hmm. And the computer will, will, will fix it. If it's not dot com, it will bring you dot net. Yeah. That ORG, you know, yeah. it's just going to do that. It will redirect you. It's redirect you, yeah. yeah. So, so the kid knowing that aspect mm-hmm. in itself is beyond dangerous. Yes. So, yeah, the pornography, I don't want to say a big word, but it's kind of a reality now that we have to deal with. No, for sure. It is a content. It is. It's a bad content mm-hmm. that everybody can access, big or young or any anybody. Mm-hmm. So now, instead of looking at it, with denial, mm-hmm. we actually need to take it on. Yeah. It has to be something that we talk about. We talk about and what are the alternatives? What are the solutions? Yeah. Because any addiction is when you have the means, mm-hmm. financial means and time, mm-hmm. and Access. you have a lack of the good alternative. Mm-hmm. A lack of good alternative. If somebody happily married, wife and husband fulfilling each other's need, why would they look at the pornography? I don't see a reason. Yeah. Except there is sickness. Yes. That means there is something that he yeah. wants which is not there. Yep. He's looking for it. So we have to educate that person that what you're looking for is not right. Mm-hmm. Okay? This is all fake stuff. Yeah. So, but if, if the husband and wife missing something, then we need to rehabilitate them to have that thing which is missing. Yep. It's halal. For sure. Yeah. So, so basically, if a person has the, the need, will not look for it you know, let alone look for it in yeah. a wrong way, mm-hmm. in, in a wrong way. So pornography is there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is not as much among married couple as single. For sure, yeah. But it is there in the married mm-hmm. life. Yes, yeah. I, I, I seen okay, lots of complaints in this regard. I, mean, I want to move on to more happier things, inshallah, instead of the issues and complaints. Um, Sheikh, I want you to just talk. You have any jazz, you have... The judges of the Ashr al Kubra and the Sukhra yes. of the Ten Qiraat. Alhamdulillah. Right? Um, so I want us to react to a video. It okay. became very popular. And I noticed this Sheikh is speaking into, and he's reading Surah Al Yusuf in different Qiraat. Yes. And the way that you guys recite your Qiraat. So I wanted you to walk us through it after we listen to it and kind of give us the technical analysis, as if you will, of it. وغلقت الأبواب وقالت هيت لك وقالت هيت لك وقالت هيت لك وقالت هيت لك وغلقت الأبواب وقالت هيت لك قال معاذ الله معاذ الله إنه ربي أحسن مثوي أحسن مثواي إنه لا يفلح والم. So, Allahu Akbar. That was beautiful. Uh, so. For a layman, he'll listen to this. Uh, when I first listened to it, is he just repeating the ayah over and over again, or how does it? First. Uh, the style that he recited yes. it. I don't agree with it. Okay. And many shiukh don't agree with it. Okay. Like that. But there are some famous qari, like Sheikh Abdul Basit, and all sure. that recited exactly like, like that. Okay. Not the way he followed the rules, mm-hmm. but they recited more correctly. Okay. Now, why I don't agree with it, or some oh, other shiukh don't agree with it. When you do jama, jama al qiraat, it means you read with more one qiraat in one breath mm-hmm. or in, in one performance, you know, mm-hmm. like you know, recited the verse. They are not supposed to mix the qiraat together. Okay. And he did. Okay. Uh, we do that for ta'aleem. Yani instead of repeating the whole ayah over and over, you bring the word that has the change and you repeat it. Mm-hmm. But the problem is, it is like, uh, uh, it is like the uh, mathematical combination and permutation. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
So it's not one word only. It is not hayta, 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 hayta. But there is al-abwab, al-abwab, al-abwab. Mm-hmm. Now, each one of those can have one of this yes. and one at the end of the verse. Yes. And if you do this, you don't do this, but you do that. Mm-hmm. And if you can do three, mm-hmm. but he's not following that. Okay. That's why he, the order is having some mistakes in it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So melody is good. Yes. And everybody is attracted as a lay person yes. to the melody. Mm-hmm. And he it is like Sheikh al-Husari and all yes. of that. You know, he's reading with a musical maqam also mm-hmm. that is very attractive. For sure. But now, is he following the rules of Qur'an? Eh, not necessarily. Okay. So that any Sheikh of Qur'an will tell you. Mm-hmm. Um, yani, um, uh, that's number two. So number one, uh, he is making jam'ah when it is not needed. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. And the number two, he's not following the order. Okay. As it's supposed to when you are reciting to a shaykh. So there's an order. There is an order. Okay. Uh, whenever you're reciting, you bring Qalun first, mm-hmm. and then you bring like Warsh after him if the change. Then there is an order of the ten Qurra. Mm-hmm. Imam Nafi' comes first, then Ibn Kathir, then you know Abi Amr, then Ibn Amr, then, uh, then uh, Asim, then Al Kisai, then Hamza, then Abu Ja'far, then Yaqub, then Khalaf al Ash. Okay. That's the order, right? Yes. Those are ten. Yes. So now how I start? Mm-hmm. I start with Qalun. Okay. Read the whole ayah with Qalun. Okay. قالوا yes. وغلقت الأبواب وقالت هي تلك قال معاذ الله إنه ربي أحسن مثواك mm-hmm. إنه ربي أحسن مثواك All right طيب Who saying ربي أحسن مثواك Who saying مثواي mm-hmm. Who saying مثواي Who who's saying that And who saying الأبواب versus الأبواب versus الأبواب mm-hmm. And who says هيتا versus هيتو versus هيتا mm-hmm. You have to know the order. Yes. So you go from the end of the ayah, say mm-hmm. if somebody reciting exactly like Qalun, mm-hmm. but the word Mathwa is a difference, you bring that one. Okay. Someone reciting like Qalun, but the word Hita, you start from Hita. Mm-hmm. But the, somebody is stop over there on Al-Abwaab, <coughs> then you have to go repeat from the beginning. Mm-hmm. He did not do that. Okay. So it's just a performance. It's just a performance, and people like, Aita, Hita, Huta, like they yes. like that kind yes. of thing. So that is one. Now you have to know who's doing what. Mm-hmm. A lay person also, he's seeing the variation. Mm-hmm. But because I know. So he said, وَغَلَّقَتِ الْأَبْوَابَ وَقَالَتْ هِيْتَ لَكَ Qalun will recite like that. يعني نافع will recite هِيْتَ mm-hmm. Abu Ja'far will recite هِيْتَ mm-hmm. Ibn Dhaqwan and Ibn Amir will recite هِيْتَ Right? Mm-hmm. But هِيْتُ هِيْتُ is Hisham where he, uh, where, uh, you know, hit talaka hisham, where hay to laka ibn kathir, where the rest will hay talaka. Right? Yes. So now, who's doing again? Who's doing? Al abwab, right. and then you have to repeat hay ta, hay ta, like that. But he read al abwab, and he did all the variations of hay ta. Uh, mm-hmm. Which is not right. Okay. And then he went, he said al abwab, uh-huh. that is warsh. Yes. Right? And he did it. And then Mathwaya, 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 he did not do it except different yeah, way. Yeah. So he kind of jumbled it. Jumbled it together. Okay. <laughs> okay. Subhanallah. Yeah. It's, it's funny when uh, when you see, when you're so fascinated by something, right? And then you get somebody <laughs> that's a professional in the, in the, in whatever it is, it could be anything. Um, and then it kind of like, oh, wow, there's levels to it. Yeah. Subhanallah. Yeah. <laughs> no, there is levels to it. Yeah. Um, I wanted us to react to it. Another got it because you said that you don't agree with his style, with his type of recitation. So I want to listen to this other sheikh right now, this other got it, and I kind of want to get into the weeds of what consists of a proper recitation right. versus an improper recitation. Okay. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawmiddin Iyaka Na'abudu Wa Iyaka Nasta'in Hudina Sirat Al-Mustaqim Sirat Al-Ladin An'amta Alayhim Gwairi Al-Maghdubi Alayhim Wa Nattalim So the way that he recites it's almost like um, it's like a concert right um and I don't know if his tajweed is all the way there. Um, no, his tajweed is not there. Okay. <laughs> so, 
I uh, just want to get your reaction on it and okay. uh, the difference. You said proper qira'a or okay. proper recitation versus not proper. Okay. The, the 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 main thing is you follow the tajweed rules. Tajweed rules are tajweed rules. Mm-hmm. There is no tajweed one o one and fifteen point one. Then tomorrow becomes fifteen point two. There is no such a thing. It's either you're reading with tajweed or you are not reading with tajweed. Okay. Very simple. You know, mm-hmm. you have to establish that first. Yes. Sometimes you're reading with tajweed, but you're missing up some of the things. But you are abiding by the main rules. That's why they say lah najali means you are missing up something major. Mm-hmm. Lahn khafi means something hidden. Only a scholar of tajweed will know it. Okay. Then lahn khafi jiddan, mm-hmm. that only grandmasters of tajweed will know it. Okay. So he's doing jiddan. Okay. <laughs> he's doing like jelly. Okay. Yani it's up there. So غير المغضوب, mm-hmm. يعني you cannot do that. يا غير المغضوب, two haraka only. Mm-hmm. Two haraka means the duration that you spend in pronouncing two alifs. Mm-hmm. A is one haraka. A, A is two haraka. Mm-hmm. A, A is a duration. Yes. A, that's the duration of saying A, A, two mm-hmm. alifs. So when you say two haraka, means the time you spend in pronouncing two alifs. Mm-hmm. So there is a ba, ba, yani ba, ba, like yeah. a, you know, yeah, two yeah. haraka. Yeah. For he is doing al maghdubi, it's supposed to be two haraka, he said al maghdubi, four haraka. Mm-hmm. So that's a mess up, that's a, a major no no. Mm-hmm. Right? Reading fast, by the way, people will be shocked, it's not an issue. Okay. You can read fast, which is called Hadr. Yes. But you observing the rules of Tajweed. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahim, Maliki Yawmiddin. No problem. Mm-hmm. Right? But when you say Alhamdulillah, now, now, now the pronunciation right. will be affected, the sifat will be affected, Makharij is affected, you are not pronouncing properly, you are not doing a full haraka, mm-hmm. you're shortening the one haraka. Yes. It's like he is extending. The two haraka to three or four, mm-hmm. and he's shortening the one haraka to half. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, that is one. Number two, he's making tar'eed. Okay. That, okay. That's called tar'eed, and that's also another mistake. Okay. Without يعني, mentioning names, some of big imams yes. for big places in the world, they have the same issue mm-hmm. when they are saying Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Rahman Rahim. That is not right. It's not acceptable because you are adding more alifs yes. now. Al alami, ye 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 ye. You know, that is not right. Al rahma. Okay. Uh, that's that's not mm-hmm. that that's not something uh, acceptable. Okay. Um, and then you know he's performing and he's following his, his hands yes. and all of that. It's not a concert. Yeah, you telling people, Allah say, Amin, come on. <laughs> it's it's not. Uh, so these these are things and. Uh, I believe this is lack of mentorship. Okay. And yani most of these people, uh, they are enslaved or they're attracted uh, or they were sucked in into the black hole of fame and being celebrity. Mm-hmm. So there is no mentorship. There is no sheikh telling them, no, stop there, don't do that. But then it becomes the, um, a, big, a big problem of, mm-hmm. of uh, fame and money. And uh, I had many people that I sent to uh, they are famous and they have followers of million plus in the social media. And I know somebody who knows them. I said, ask them to read on a sheikh. And if they need help, I'll help them for free. I mean, there is nothing. They can recite a whole khatma of Quran and we give them ijazah to fix this problem because they are a celebrity and they have little things to fix. But they have that ego, yeah. that hard... Like, hard don't tell me what to it's do. It's hard you... to come to tell them what to do and... He recites and you fix it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's 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 tough. Mm-hmm. Even some of them come and recite a couple of times and then never hear the, heard them again because you know too many mistakes. Yeah, mm-hmm. so it's they get of, shy. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like you know I'm famous and people listen to me no anyway. matter what. So why yeah. why are you trying to fix it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Mm-hmm. And speaking of Quran, Shahr al Quran is coming. Mashallah. Uh, good segue, right? Yeah. <laughs> so um, Ramadan is coming. I wanted to do a lightning fast. Does this break your fast or not? Okay. So, um, uh, really quickly, what uh, Ramadan is coming, and we have a lot of questions. I have a lot of questions come in. Does this break my fast? Does this break my fast? So, I kind of want to cover all of them really quickly. So, uh, the first one is Does brushing your teeth break your fast? No, except if the toothpaste goes to your throat. Inside, like you so, swallow. Yeah. Okay. How about uh, donating blood? No. Hijama. 
Uh, no, the correct opinion is no. Some mm-hmm. scholars said yes. Okay. Um, uh, watching pornography. Um, it takes away the reward, mm-hmm. but it does not break the fast. Okay. That means you continue the fasting. Mm-hmm. Masturbation. Yeah. Uh, it will break the fasting. It will break the fast. Mm-hmm. Is there a type of kafara that you have to do? No, you make up for that day. Just because it is not jama'ah. Okay. It is not a sexual intercourse. Okay. And then if you do sexual intercourse during... Mm-hmm. Then this is a kafara for that. You know, you have to feed the um, skin and you have to... I mean, I'm sorry, you have to fast t- t- 60 days or feed 60 miskeen. And Subhanallah. That's, that's, you know, it's a bigger, mm-hmm. big, big one. Okay, taking IV. Some of the scholars said if you take nutritious things through IV, mm-hmm. but the correct one is not mm-hmm. because it is not going through the channel, okay. proper channel. But I lean toward the scholar said if it is nutrition, it breaks the fasting. Okay. Because if you are that weak, that mm-hmm. means you're supposed to break the fasting anyways. anyways. You know? In- but IV for other reasons, medicine or something, no. Insulin? No. Okay. It doesn't uh, break the fast. Taking any type of oral pill? Or a pill, yes. Okay. But inhaler is, is no. Inhaler, yeah. Was good. Inhaler. Smoking. Smoking, there is a debate about it. Okay. Because is it is it particles like a liquid or mm-hmm. it is gas? Because the inhaler, yes. that way, will, if you say the inhaler does not break the fasting smoking. I'm not saying smoking is good or bad. Yes, I'm just, we're talking about technicality here. Yeah. But it will break the fasting. It will break because the fast. Because there is no need for it. It is not medicine. It's not. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it will break the fasting. So the same thing with vaping, yes. ergilia, all that right. type of smoking. All of that. Okay. No, this is great. That was good. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, and then I wanted to speak on um, other type of questions that we hear, especially with the youth. So I, uh, we, um, we interface with the youth a lot. Um, and we started a mentorship class, kind of like our mentorship class that right. we had with the youth. And they, and they ask questions and they're curious, You're right? You're supposed to. Of course. And I, and I always try to tell them, like, hey, don't feel shy. No, don't feel shy. Of asking any question. Encourage them. Encourage yes, them. for sure. So um, questions that have come up, like, are selling feet pictures halal for a man or a woman? Let, let me let me give you why they ask this. One thing, it's anonymous. No one will know if this sister's feet are on, are online. Some of them also think that feet are not aura. You don't. Women don't have to cover their feet. It's not aura, so anybody could see their feet. Uh, and. Th- if she does this, it's anonymous, it's not aura, and she's just, it's innocent. Same thing for the male. Men also, subhanAllah, it's getting crazy, they sell feet pictures online. So would that, because of a man's foot is not aura, and it's anonymous, would that be okay to do? Now, the question comes before you say anything. Mm-hmm. Why somebody would... Uh, for money. V- no, but why? Why would somebody would buy a foot picture? Uh, sexual desire. Then it's haram. Okay. You see, it's like, you know, وسائل تأخذ حكم المقاصد يعني the means mm-hmm. take the rulings of the goal. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes. So why a person putting their foot picture there mm-hmm. and why a person consuming that? Forget about money or no money. Mm-hmm. There is lots of pornography which is free. Yes. So the idea is you do not say pornography there. What if I take the face of the people oh. and I see their body and all of that. Then you'll say, oh, the body is aura, but you don't know whose body is, is it. Mm-hmm. You know, foot is not aura, but what is it used for is a haram act, mm-hmm. right? It's modeling. They yes. call it modeling, yeah. right? Modeling, haram act. Even nobody knows it is your, you are, it is not a sin on the person who put the foot. It is a sin on the promotion of the idea. Because you're idea. you're kind of providing to that, right? Like you're aiding that. Like sexual I am desire. hiding my face, but I'm doing a haram act. Mm-hmm. Then you're gonna say it's not me. Mm-hmm. No, it doesn't matter who who it is. It's promoting fahisha. Yes, you're exposing your foot, which is not aura, mm-hmm. fine, but for a sexual reason, mm-hmm. and you're getting money selling a sexual content for some people. Yeah. For majority is nothing, mm-hmm. but for certain people they have this kind of uh, fetish. fetish about it, and then they are by, by putting money mm-hmm. for sexual stuff. Mm-hmm. So that's where it's haram from, yeah. Mm-hmm. So don't mix, is it aura or not? Yeah. No mix. What is it leading to, and why it was done? Okay. All right. for that. Uh, last two things that I want to talk about. Um, 
And then I have one more topic at the end, inshallah. There's this sister. It's a reaction. There's this sister who is a recent Muslim. Mm-hmm. She's a revert. And we have a big... We kind of have a, like a, a good, uh, a good uh, community no. of reverts at our masjid too. And they probably have asked you these questions is that she feels more comfortable. She feels that she connects to Allah through doing her prayers in English. Mm. She tried to do her prayers in Arabi, but it takes too long for whatever reason. She doesn't feel as connected to Allah through Arabi. But when she does it in Arabic, I mean, when she does it in English rather, she feels so connected to Allah. And that's the way that she decided that she's going to read her salah. And we'll watch the video right now. I'm a Muslim and I pray in English. And I know that's gonna sound crazy to some people, um, but the reason that I do that is number one, my native language is English. I don't know much Arabic at all. So for me to say the prayer in Arabic, I'm not actually knowing what the words are as I'm saying it. Even if I memorize the entire Salah in Arabic, I still won't be connecting with the words as I'm saying it in the same way. Second of all, I remember that when I just became Muslim, I forced myself to pray in Arabic, even though I didn't know the words and even though it was very hard for me because I didn't know there was another way. So it used to take me maybe around 45 minutes per each Salah. So by the time I finished preparing and doing my prayer and my Dua, it was almost time to prepare for the next Salah. So my entire day was basically preparing for or doing the prayers, which this is amazing in theory, but in reality, as a new Muslim, I was overwhelmed and I, I felt like there was so much pressure. I just timed my prayer in English and it was five minutes. So my goal in my faith is to be sustainable. So I kind of understand, like, I understand the sentiment of it, right? But, um, like, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any conclusion, mm-hmm. like she reached a conclusion mm-hmm. based on a process. Yes. Of analogy. Mm-hmm. And this process of analogy based on input. Mm-hmm. And those input, there is pre-assumption. Okay. So there are a few pre- pre-assumptions. First, I want to congratulate the sister for her Islam, praying mm-hmm. may Allah uh, strengthen you mm-hmm. and guide you and make you better. Mm-hmm. And when I say make you better, mm-hmm. you, you have to know what is best in your religion, mm-hmm. not what you feel. Mm-hmm. So that's the first presumption. That's what makes me feel. Mm-hmm. Uh, second presumption is shorter time. Who said that prayer has to be short? Because she said it's only five minutes. Mm-hmm. That means as if prayer should be only five minutes. And if three minutes is better, mm-hmm. what if it's seven minutes? It's not good. You know? So you have to look what you're saying. Hear yourself again, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, also, who said that you have to feel connected or not feel connected? You, you start first with the prayer, and then connection comes or doesn't come, but you have to fulfill the aspect of prayer itself. Mm-hmm. Nobody can come and say, you know what, I will not start praying until I start feeling it. Mm-hmm. That allowed though? No. no. The minute you accepted Islam, you have to pray that prayer. Yes. If it is Asr time, you want to pray Asr. No matter We're what. not going to tell you Fajr and Zuhr. No, you, you accepted Islam now, you pray Asr. How I'm going to pray while I don't know? Just imitate. Mm-hmm. You know? So basically... Perfe- that's another presumption that I have to do everything perfectly at once. Mm-hmm. And that's the wrong presumption. Who told you that? No one. You can spend all your life actually learning prayer in the next 10 years. Mm-hmm. Nobody's rushing you, but you're learning. Also, that uh, she has, she said that I spend preparing for the whole prayer in Arabic. Actually, it's, you're making it hard for yourself. Should learn, like, you know, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Mm-hmm. That's easy, one day. And in when you say Allahu Akbar, how hard is to say Allahu Akbar? Actually, Allah is great, is much harder than Allahu Akbar, yani longer. Yes. Um, and then, you know, I know it's another language, and that's another issue of itself. Yeah. If, you have, um, if, if you have something precious, mm-hmm. do you put an easy password or a hard password? Hard password. Why? Because you, you 
you want value, to secure, you, you value, value it. that. Yeah. So you are okay to put a, a password. You try to remember the password. Mm -hmm. You keep the password, it's and you're gonna put all this password Seriously. every time. Yes. You are not saying that. Uh, you know what? I need to put an easy password because it's easier for me. Mm -hmm. You don't do that. So if you really value Salah, if mm -hmm. you know the level of Allah Azza wa you're gonna learn Arabic for it. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying go learn it the whole Arabic now. No. Um, and then, you know, you say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Fatih has seven verses. Mm -hmm. So the scholars told us that a revert or a new Muslim say, Allahu Akbar, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, seven times. Mm -hmm. Instead of reading, until they, you know, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Mm -hmm. Then they say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to, to, to and when you go down, say Subhan Rabbil Azim, or say Subhanallah, mm -hmm. or just don't say anything mm -hmm. until you learn. And you go on and on until your salah within a year, within a month, or whatever it is, you are saying everything in Arabic. Mm -hmm. Then go for the meaning. And when you say Allahu Akbar, you know Allah is Allah. Mm -hmm. Akbar means the greatest. So when you say Allahu Akbar, you know the translation in your head. Mm -hmm. So you got to feel. Connection with Allah, when, when you say, I feel connected, mm -hmm. actually you don't feel connected, you just feel comfortable. There are two different things. Two different things. I have lots of reverts, not one, not two, lots of them. They said, I felt connected with Allah the moment I put my head down. Mm -hmm. The moment I said, Allahu Akbar, in their own you know, uh, accent, I said, yeah. I said, Allahu Akbar, I started crying. Mm -hmm. Now I feel this is connection. Mm -hmm. But connection doesn't mean comfort. It doesn't. It doesn't mean comfort. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you are praying in the cold weather yeah. and you are like not comfortable, but you are connected. And sometimes you are very, very comfortable, but not connected. Mm -hmm. So yani, those are things like I disagree with yeah. from the presumption perspective. For sure. That salah has to be short, mm -hmm. that the salah has to be comfortable, mm -hmm. that you have to know all of it at once. Mm -hmm. That uh, I'm a Muslim, but I do my salah in English. Then somebody comes in, I do my salah in Russian, and yeah. I do my salah in. This. I was just gonna say and that. I do my salah in Texan, yeah, because you know speaking <laughs> like this. proper English is gonna become. And I do salah in Ebonics, yeah. and I'm gonna do salah. My come on, you know, yeah. like no. One of the miracles that Quran is one Quran only in one language only, mm -hmm. and if you go to church, they say the things in Latin or mm -hmm. they say in Aramaic. In Egypt, they say it in the old Coptic language, yeah, even though they don't speak it. That actually is giving the awe to the religion, is giving mm -hmm. the, the weight to it that you are striving with something special. Mm -hmm. You don't bring the prayer down, you actually go up to it. Yeah. yeah. No, no, for sure. And then uh, like, kind of like what you mentioned is like, where do we stop there? If we say that, yes. it's okay. if you want to feel connection, then read it in Arabic, read it in English. Okay. Right. I feel connection when I pray Isha Tu only. Right. Where, where do we stop there? But it's not a connection, as I said. The word, no, yeah, I the word connection is a gift. Mm -hmm. Who can say that I'm connected in prayer from A to Z? Even they know everything in Arabic, they are Arab. I memorize the whole Quran. I cannot make that claim. Mm -hmm. That from the first moment to the last moment, I'm connected. I wish. Yeah. Everybody wishes. But shaitan is not going to leave you alone. You know, Your worry, your anxiety, the weight of responsibility and all of that, they will make you... Even the Prophet himself وسلم, said, I, I start the prayer is intending to lengthen it. Mm -hmm. Then I hear the crying of a baby in the back. So I shorten my prayer out of worry for his mother. That means there is a process of thinking out of prayer while he's praying. Can, you cannot say he was not connected to God. He is the most connected person to Allah. But mm -hmm. and the perception of connection here is not clear. Yeah. Yeah. So, Sheikh, the second last thing that I want to talk about is um, there's this... <laughs> <laughs> Subhanallah, I don't know how this happens, but there's this new guy who's coming out. Apparently, he's like this mystic Raqi. <laughs> he does karamat. He apparently has like karamat from Allah. Allahu Alam. His name is Pir Chuf Chuf, is what they've called him. So he gets, he sells tickets. And this happens in the UK. He sells tickets, and there's probably thousands of people in his audience that hold their head like this. Okay. And he does, he has a masbaha. I'll show you, I'll, we'll react to the video. He has a masbaha and he does, I don't know what he does, and then he just blows in the microphone and apparently everybody gets his blessing. We'll, we'll pull up the clip right now. <laughs> Jesus. 
That's good enough. So, I wanted to get your reaction on, on this. Fake. Not <laughs> long. Well, <laughs> yeah, it's very clear. Um, you know, people, <clears throat> they, they look for the least of things to justify the depression that they have or the anxiety that they have. Mm. Sometimes, actually, a person might have a gin, might have something, but... Um, this is not the way to do it. يعني الخير في اتباع من سلف الخير كل الخير في اتباع من سلف you follow the sunnah of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم you follow the sunnah of the Anbiya and the Mursaleen طبعا reciting Quran and blowing it's from the sunnah you know من شر النفاثات في العقد they blow in the knots so also blow when you recite to a knot things like when I recite بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الذي يضر مع اسمي شيء that's all right. Mm-hmm. But to do that in the microphone and magnify the effect of it on the thousands of audience and uh, having the tasbih, it's more of a, a facade, you know, like yeah. a show kind of thing. Mm-hmm. That is, that's not how it is done. You know, mm-hmm. that, is there any precedence in the sunnah or the setaf, anything about people putting their hands like this on their heads? That, oh, you, no, you do not make the person put his hand. From, from the sunnah, the Nabi Wasallam told us, and whoever... Uh, put their hand on where the pain is, mm-hmm. if the pain in my chest or my shoulder or my foot or my knee or my head, and say, Bismillah, 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 mm-hmm. I seek refuge in, you know, in the name of Allah three times, then I seek refuge in Allah from what I find and what I'm afraid of. Seven times Allah heals. Mm-hmm. And the Raqi put his hand on the head of the person or that, unless, of course, male-female interaction. Yes. So um, all of this is there. But for you, I ask you to put your head hand on your head, and I am not even reciting, yeah. and I'm doing like this. I don't think it is... And he has the echo, so it gives it more... Yeah, but that's all of the, part of the show, you know. Yeah. And it happened in every religion, by the way. Yeah, Not sure. only Islam, so this is... More of it. And the word peer in Urdu means like the uh, the highly respected mm-hmm. religious guy. Mm-hmm. And Chufshuf, I think, is not what he called himself. <laughs> no, but it, because he, he spits a lot. <laughs> so uh, this is... This is, this is Subhanallah. Right, you know? uh, last thing I want to talk about, Sheikh, is... Uh, it's kind of uh, out of the blue. I want to talk about it. Is that... Something that we missed earlier on the podcast is when I was talking about East versus West, right? I get a lot of people telling me that we should stay or we should move overseas, right, to the Muslim countries. And alhamdulillah, like you said, there's tradition there. There's usul there. There's a foundation set. Even if they don't follow Islam, there is a culture of Islam there. Whatever it is, bid'ah, not bid'ah, that's not what I'm talking about. There is like a fundamental kind of respect culture there. For myself, I feel like for me and my family, I feel like it'd be more beneficial if I moved overseas. If I found a job there, of course, financial's a huge thing as well. So if I found a job there, because I'm currently looking for something on on, on that side. Um, so if I found a job there, I think that would be great for me and my family because of kind of that that underlying Islamic Islamic culture. I'm not saying I'm just going to throw my kids in the school and they'll turn out good. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that I'm trying to minimize as many variables mm. as I can. Now, there are two things. Mm-hmm. And I know it's not going to be happy for you, but whatever I'm saying, and maybe I put you in the spot too. You're my student, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, why are you going there? If you are going there for Islam, Hijra is basically giving up something for something. Mm-hmm. And that's what the Sahaba did, you know, yeah. the Hijra. And there is no Hijra from Mecca to Medina after Fath Mecca. Mm-hmm. But the Hijra continues until Yawm Al-Qiyamah. The Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Muhajir is the one who abandons whatever displeases Allah Azza wa whether it is in action or, uh, or in a place. So, um, of course, going to Dar al-Islam, yeah. Yani living in a place which is having the pa- banner of Islam, uh, 
and that's very hard to find now, but let's say that we assume goodness in a Muslim country more than a non-Muslim country, and there, of course, you go there. But what are you willing to sacrifice? Mm -hmm. And this is where I'm going to put you on the spot. Mm -hmm. You said, if I find the job. Mm -hmm. So if it is actually a hijrah, you're not going to be looking for a job. You're going to abandon your job and go for a place with no job yeah. because of the Islam. Mm -hmm. But if you are making this as a secondary thing, only when you find a job, mm -hmm. then it is not about that. Okay. You, you understand? I understand what so you're if, saying. So if people, I, I, you know, this, this is, I'm going to make hijrah, but if I am financially stable there, mm -hmm. that's not what hijrah is about. Mm -hmm. If you are financially stable here yeah. and you like the way it looks over there, provided that you have the same financial stability, mm -hmm. then it is not hijrah for the purpose here. Okay, it's I understand what for, you're saying. Yeah. So, and I'm not talking about you only. I'm talking about money only. You have to decide why are you leaving. Mm -hmm. If you are not satisfied with the morality of the country, yes. then money and finances and suffering and struggling comes next, mm -hmm. and secondary. Yeah. So you might leave the comfort here for the struggle True. there. You might leave the ease here for the hardship there. Mm -hmm. Because now your point is Islam for me and my spouse and my children. Let's mm -hmm. be realistic, you know. Yeah. But people want both, both good ways. of both worlds. I, I understand. Yeah. Well, I have the both of good worlds here, mm -hmm. right? Like I am financially stable here more than overseas. Yes. And I'm religiously also more involved because I'm an imam and I'm this and that. So you cannot say as a blanket judgment or categorical statement mm -hmm. that for a Muslim, leaving the West is always better than living uh, in it. Mm -hmm. Leave the West to the East. Mm -hmm. Well, it will be, you'll be surprised. Good for certain people to actually leave the East and come the East, live come the West because mm -hmm. they're persecuted. Yeah. This country gives asylum to people based on religious persecution <laughs> and then they come here and I'm not saying in generally is a good thing. I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you it is a case by case if maslaha for you is here, mm -hmm. then stay here. Mm -hmm. Religious maslaha yeah. for you, stay here. If it is there, then you should stay there and then look to the finances uh, second. Now, if the finances are very important for you, mm -hmm. then you are not talking about hijrah here. Mm -hmm. You are talking about a better of a career right. chance. Yes. You know, better, better for career. Mm -hmm. That's my... <laughs> uh, no, I, like I was just saying, like, if I can, like, I'll do with what I can do here, of course. I don't want to put my family through struggle by moving over there. And I understand that there's kind of like a contradiction of what I'm saying. But it's if I find the right position over there, I, I would know. take that leap. No, I would, I would, I would second that. Mm -hmm. if, if, if you are financially stable here mm -hmm. and you are financially stable there, mm -hmm. no, there is better than here for sure. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you know, um, over there, at least the, the community that have Islam yeah, as the practice, the yeah. assumed practice. Yes, you know? of course. So... It's it's not gonna be you are not gonna see yourself as a stranger as a Muslim. You're not gonna see yourself a stranger as a Muslim mm -hmm. there like you are here. But again, it's, yeah. it's give and take an exception for to sure. the rule. You know? It's more nuanced for sure. Um, and lastly, Sheikh, we are inshallah, Allahumma uh, balighna Ramadan. Ramadan is in less than a week. Yes, inshallah. Um, if you can just give us. Uh, just a little bit of what we're what we're expecting, inshallah. Well, Ramadan is a season of uh, worship. Mm -hmm. We worship Allah all year round. Perfect. We have a chance to fast all year round. Mm -hmm. But like Ramadan is like more of a concentrated uh, effort. It's an intensive course. Mm -hmm. It is um, a lot of things in such a short time. Mm -hmm. So utilize it, optimize it, mm -hmm. optimize the use and, and all of that. And, and do as much as you can. Mm -hmm. Don't let a second pass by without benefiting from it. Even if you are asleep, if you are asleep, if you are sleeping during the night or during the day, it is for a better purpose to, to have energy, to relax yourself so you can wake up fresh and do more ibadah. Mm -hmm. uh, start from now, you know, like warm up to it. Mm -hmm. Don't wait, it's not like a switch on, switch off, yeah. like you suddenly enter Ramadan, then you're gonna lose interest after a few days. But start from now reciting the Quran and doing your salah, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, uh, you do you do ibadah and adhkar and all that. Mm -hmm. My uh, advice, a practical advice for yes. everybody, try to focus on one good habit mm -hmm. that you did not do before or you are not doing right now and you would like to do and focus on it in Ramadan to continue after Ramadan. 
Mm-hmm. Like say, I'm going to okay. start doing it in Ramadan and carry it over. Not only a Ramadan practice, mm-hmm. not only a seasonal practice. Yes. And I'll give you an example too. And then find also one bad habit that you're already having now. And you say, you know what, I'm going to quit it in Ramadan for me to continue quitting after Ramadan. Okay. So, so don't pick a good deed just for Ramadan and don't bit, uh, stop a bad deed just, just during Ramadan. Ramadan. Mm-hmm. Okay. So pick one. Mm-hmm. Don't make them two, don't make them three. Trust me. Just and I'll tell, you, I'll tell you why. Because once you pick one, actually it is going to have another 10, 15 good deeds around yeah. it. And the bad habit will have 10, 15 bad habits around it. Mm-hmm. So it's going to carry th- over other yes. things without you even feeling it, without you making conscious effort, actually. Mm-hmm. You'll, you'll find that. So I'll give you an example. Like let's say I do not sit after salah and make a proper dua. Mm-hmm. Simple. Yeah. But something that we don't pay attention to. Assalamu alaikum, assalamu alaikum. Then we move and talk and all that. You say, you know what? I'm going to say it's three minutes. I'm going to do my tasbih, tahmid, takbir, tahleel. And then I'm going to raise my hand and do a dua for a couple of minutes. Mm-hmm. After every single salah. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to continue that for the rest of my life. That's a good habit right there. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say 10 istighfar every time I ride my car. That's an act I never yeah. did before. And I'm going to start getting to the habit of it. After Ramadan, it will be very hard for you to abandon yeah, that. For sure. Why? Because you intended to carry it over while doing after it. Ramadan. Mm-hmm. Like doing it. So intention here is not something I want to do in Ramadan. No, intention here is I am training myself during mm-hmm. Ramadan for a habit that I want to do it for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. That intention itself Makes it sweet, mm-hmm. makes sure. it nice. Yeah. You are training for a permanent skill. Mm-hmm. Bad habit, same thing. You say, you know, like, I watch TikTok, for example, or this silly things. And this I learned from one of the youth, by the way, teenagers. He said, like, in Ramadan, I make all my TikTok Islamic things. Yeah. I don't know how they do it, but they kind of, like, uh, they say, play the algorithm Yes, they yes. play the algorithm Until everything comes about Ramadan mm-hmm. And why you don't do that for the rest of your life? You see, in Ramadan only You know, you kind of feel more religious and more mm-hmm. spiritual You're supposed to be more religious and spiritual for all sure. the time you're Supposed to raise So my advice yani, is Quit one habit mm-hmm. And uh, adopt one, one good, good habit, habit. Yeah. Inshallah. Inshallah May Allah allow us to do that Ameen Jazakumullah khair, Sheikh. This was such a fruitful conversation. Inshallah, we'll have you on in another episode because there's so many more topics I want to talk about with uh, with you. Um, for those of you who are still watching, Jazakumullah khair, everybody for watching. Uh, don't miss out on also our BJJ Umrah trip that it's happening between the 19th of April and the 28th of April where we're having a seven-day Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu intensive during Umrah. So uh, don't miss out, Inshallah. Uh, جزاكم الله خير everybody for listening سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك ونتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله